trucks are different. Tacoma is built for your life's adventures. Dependable day in and day out for weekend warriors and as a die-hard work truck. Tacomas also do better when it comes to fuel costs. Now's the time to buy right. Toyota trucks are different. Inside Press Box is presented by Friedmont Mortgage. Don't make a 30-year mistake by choosing the wrong lender. Go to Friedmont.com now for all of your mortgage needs. And we are back on Inside Press Box. As mentioned before, the break, joining this interesting conversation, all the way to my right is the Director of Sports Marketing for the State of Maryland, and that is my old friend Terry Hazeltine. And Terry, just want to hit you real quick. What did you think of Marty's list? What did you think of the impact scores? And were there any obvious omissions to someone like you? Well, I thought the list was outstanding. Um, one of the things, obviously, we sit here and we look at it and we can go up and down and we move someone up one, down one, over two, or whatever. But I thought the list was outstanding. The one thing that I thought, you know, in my opinion, that pervaded it was you look at the people and who they surround themselves with. You know, I get the chance to work with some of those folks, not directly, but the people that they surround themselves with in their organizations. And I thought the list was outstanding. Now, like I said, you talked about the ranking and where people are. Where they're, where, did I see where there could be a shift one or two? But yeah, but that's all, you know, but that's subjective to my, my personal preference and how I work with those groups. But I thought the list was outstanding. I thought Marty did an outstanding job putting the list together. I, th I thought he did as well. One thing, though, J.P. Grant is, is sort of the, his, his energy is behind the, the Grand Prix. Tom Chukas, the COO now, a, a president and COO of the Maryland Jockey Club, dealing with two things that really, in a lot of ways, are two days or three days, if you will. Do you think they belong on the list? I think they do, because um, when you look at horse racing as a whole, you know, the ebb and flow of what happened to horse racing about five, seven years ago, where there was a decline and seeing the rise back with the Preakness growing back into being, you know, a really true marquee event for, for Baltimore. You can see the growth. The state played a big role in helping it cultivate that, you know, not only through my office, but through the governor's office and, and the like there. Also with the, the, the race, the race, you know, has gone through some ebb and flow based on management and operation. And where JP played a role, he's helped solidify the stability and bringing in Andretti and the other team members to the, to the table. So now you're going into year three and you're seeing a, a you know, stabilization of the events. And that's because of JP and his work ethic and the people that, once again, he surrounded himself with in order to deliver, you know, what will be a great Grand Prix this year. Marty, uh, yeah. Terry works directly under, for the state of Maryland, so he's technically under Governor O'Malley. Yeah. But we were talking a, a little bit, you and I privately, yeah. if this were 20 years ago, would a politician have been on this list? Yeah, absolutely. One of the departures is that the, this is all a list of pub, uh, private officials, as you can tell, as you can see on the list. And yeah, 20 years ago, Governor, the Mayor William Donner Schaefer would have gathered several of the city godfathers, corporate leaders, and said, this is an important event. It, we needed to be stable, et cetera, and they would have all done that. The dynamics of that have changed. Um, and so what you see here is a lot of private individuals stepping forward, a lot of private activity. It's not to say that there's not public. And again, if the list were longer, you'd see some of those names. But in terms of the actual influence and impact right now, um, this is the way the scoring ended up. And I, and I think that uh, for the most part, it sort of represents the current contemporary situation in sports marketing around here. Now, M Marty worked for a couple of people that were pretty powerful in sports. Right now, he knows some of those people. You work with some of these, these members on this list of 13. What would you say is one thing that kind of ties them all together? I think... Um where the list in, in, in Marty's observation is the, the fact that how they can influence the outcome of a desired goal. Because one, they can one, bring money to the table. Two, they can surround themselves with the right people and engage the right people to have the conversation about a, a, an opportunity or an activity or whatever it might be. So when you look at it, I think it's just a, a, their ability and their leadership styles and who they surround themselves once again is critical to how they cultivate and create an opportunity of success. If we were, if, th if this were now an effort being put forth by the Baltimore, Washington area to try and get the Olympics here again, like we did, uh, what yeah. was it, about 12, 15 years ago, we tried to. Yeah. Uh, and it was some good people. Yeah. But it looks like this list would be a little bit more powerful yeah. than maybe some folks back then. There wasn't a Kevin Plank back then. Right. There wasn't a Bashotti, right. and Peter Angelos had just kind of gotten into sports. Yeah, I think that's absolutely right. In fact, you'd see many, maybe three quarters of the folks on this list that represent facility development, that represent ownership of facilities, things of the sort. I think that at the top of that list, 
Ted Leonsa, Steve Bishotti, and Kevin Plank. Ten, if you're looking 10 years down the road in this area, I don't think there'll be any really significant sports activity in, in this sort of surrounding area that the three of them together, maybe the two of the three of them, whether it's creating a sports network or the apparel rise of Under Armour, that is the opportunity to not only, again, project in the United States, but I think Under Armour has big goals outside of this country, and I think that some of, the, some of that's going to come from Under Armour's goals to to really be a global power and in, in, a, in a really competitive market, sports apparel market. If this list were being made 10 years from now, looking at your crystal ball, Terry, are the top three names going to be the same, more than likely? I think the top three will be up in the top five matrix of that list. Yep. You know, we don't know who the, the rising star in the next 10 years could be. It could be one of us sitting here for all we know. But at the end of the day, <laughs> you, you do, in the next 10 years, you don't know who that you know, next you know, great thought process, you know, remember, not too long ago, it was Kevin Plank with a new innovative idea coming out of a, out of a basement in, in, in Georgetown. Now look at him today. So we don't know who that might, the next power player might be. So you might see a shift of one or two people, but these three people at the top three will be a part of that. All right, Terry, don't go away. Marty, thank you for coming in and discussing. Be with you again. Really great topic. It thank really you. is. And we look forward to seeing more of your stuff. Marty Conway's piece, The Power 13, is online at PressBoxOnline.com or you can pick up the July print edition that is available to over 600 locations around town. Be sure to pick one up today and read that story. Terry Hazeltine is going to sit tight, and together we'll chat about what's next in his efforts to bring sports events to Maryland. We'll be right back. Join PressBox for the second Thursday Sports Lunch Series at Fedonia Station on August 8th. The featured speaker will be the executive director of the Maryland Office of Sports Marketing, Terry Hazeltine. Go to PressBoxOnline.com right now for all the details.